All right, time to talk about the new stuff. So with the chord strumming, what I'm hoping will happen is get you a little more loosened up when you're strumming, or when you, which will transform it up being a bit more loose than when you're doing the single note stuff. Uh, as I mentioned today, it's kind of noticed like the way you pick, it seems a little rigid. So I'm gonna try and get you out of being really rigid when you're playing, loosen up a little bit. And eventually, like when you're going extremely fast, there's like there's there's tension involved, but it's a controlled tension. So I want to make sure you're not <coughs> wasting energy while you play. Is there such a thing as unwanted tension, and there's such a thing as tension you want? Um, anyway, uh, and then the the other thing to think about is is your pick placement or like how you're holding it. You remember you want to have just the tip of the pick just brush the outside of the strings. So remember I mentioned the uh, think about the pick or not the pick the, the the string. You know you got the out half or the outside half and the inside half. And the idea is to have the point of the pick always brushing against the outside half of the, of the string. And you don't want to cross over past that halfway point into the inside of the string. It's going to happen. You will cross over and whatnot. But the idea <coughs> is to try not to. So you want to do the strumming stuff. Still with barely any picks to stick in there. <coughs> so let me see which yeah, this exercise here, which is very small at the moment. This is the one where I noticed uh, it sounded like there was a snapping sound coming from the strings. And that's what led me to think perhaps you had too much pick going through. So anytime you feel any resistance when you're picking, if you hear the snapping of the strings, you know, adjust your pick so barely any of it's showing up. Uh, past your fingers, you know, really choke up on it, and think about it, you just want to brush that outside part of the string. So, <clears throat> when I'm strumming, how I'm positioned, just like with single note stuff, will kind of change depending on how fast I'm going. Um, so let's, let's get a, a view of how, how that works. So still, I want you to go up and start by 60 and all this stuff every day you practice. And go up by 5s every time. No matter how fast you get, you still start at 60 and work your way up. So yeah, part of it, like when I think it was like at 140 with this, it didn't sound as smooth as it did like at 120 and, and earlier. So, <clears throat> you know, it's part of playing all of those BPMs is keeping things nice and smooth the whole time. So, 60. So lot, lots of wrist at this point. Kind of slight bend to my wrist and the arm is rotating the wrist in the pick. So. The faster I go, the tighter I'm going to have to be in the strumming. I'll be able to strum so wide. So here it is at 120. So you see the difference there? Like it's already tightened up. So let's go back to 60. I'll just play half. So notice how wide it is. I just double it up right here. So, 16th notes, then I'll do 30 seconds again and see if you can tell the difference of how the strumming looks. Now I feel this is somewhat wide. And there it's tightened up. I'm also not doing so much motion like this. So, here it is at the 60. And then 120. So it's kind of almost doing this now. 
when I go to that. It's a little bit of this, but it's mostly kind of like, almost like a combination of my arm wanting to rotate this way, and then the wrist kind of doing this sideways thing. So let's go to 140 and see what happens now. Kind of missed one. One sixty. I'm more comfortable using that part of my hand for an anchor point and strumming like that. So definitely a bit of arm going on there. I'm not really tension up hard there, it's just kind of the elbows really helping with movement there. I see, can I do it the other way? Yes, but I feel like I have less control of the pick at that speed. <clears throat> and I'll stop at 200. So, see if you can notice, you know, how your hand moves, your arm and your wrist and all that's moving as you get faster and faster through this stuff. And, you know, try different things, maybe bend the wrist more, straighten it out some, you know, position that part of your hand on the guitar's body when you're getting faster and faster, and see what feels right. See if there's sometimes changing the position just a little bit can help you go, you know, five, ten beats per minute faster. A lot of times if I'm doing something, you know, I might just do something like move my shoulder up, or instead of picking here, I'll pick over here. Or even as much as like I'll just lean back a bit further so I can see my left hand better. So I'll just try little subtle things like that and just kind of see if anything clicks so I can keep going forward. I actually got so used to practicing something with my leg back like this that when I put it forward, I couldn't play it anymore. I had to go back to it because I was so used to being in that position to play something. So, <clears throat> body acts funny like that sometimes. Okay, so this guy is going to work on down picking quite a bit. So the only time you have the upstroke is going to be in this reverse gallop rhythm right here, the 40 and. And the first chord is not palm muted. So this is one for an exercise uh, mentioned. Try not to let your the 40 and strum too much or too wide and. You know, as the, fa the faster you go, you're going to have to tighten it up. So, think of it like this. Um, think about strumming gently. Because if you put too much oomph into it, then you're spending a lot more energy. And you're not going to be able to go as fast as possible. Now, if you're playing on an acoustic, uh, then, yeah, to maintain the same level of volume you're going to have to pick a lot harder as you're going faster you know just really going crazy with it but when you got the distortion on you got your compression happening so you don't need to go very hard in fact when I'm playing really fast I'm playing pretty light it's like there's, there's not a lot of pressure going on I'm not hitting the string hard if I was hear the acoustic there stick out a lot more that's a big waste of energy there so there is something to be said for when people say play relaxed but again it's like in a way yes but believe me after a you know 10 seconds of this I'm not completely relaxed I can definitely feel it in my right hand, or my right arm, anyway. 
it's, you know, I'm really feeling it there, but I'm also not going, going ape shit with it and just beating the hell out of the strings. So, it kind of goes with the good tension versus the bad tension. So, anyway, I hope that, hope that makes sense. So, yeah, strum, think about strum and light. Even though we're playing heavy metal, we strum light and let the distortion and the compression do the work for you. Because you can't play fast while playing with a lot of force. You can't be heavy with it. You gotta be fairly gentle. So this way, yeah, you're not wasting too much energy. So here we go. Let's do a few speeds here. <clears throat> it's a good old 60. <laughs> Sixty or one eighty, you tried it, and that's when things weren't going so well anymore. You see, it's definitely possible to get that up there. As you see the whole arm now. Eventually, what I want to do um, is like get you doing other palmy patterns. Stuff like that and get that going real fast. That's helped me a bunch with rhythm type stuff. It's, it's, it's harder to play as fast as you can palm muted versus not palm muted. I think we've talked about that. Maybe I'm thinking someone up. Well, saying it again if I already did. You can't pick as fast palm muting as you can without. And that's because without the palm mute, you're able to get into that upward pick slant and use this part of your hand as an anchor point. Go crazy fast. Versus, yeah, it's just, it just didn't work so well. Like I automatically, it's like I'm trying to not let my hand go back like this. about as fast as I can do with a decent palm you. Anyway, anyway. Was I gonna, did I do 200 yet? I, let's try it. I don't know if I did that or not. 200, just for exam purposes. Uh, definitely get this riff <coughs> pretty quick. Get it up there pretty fast. Alright, and then this last guy. Getting back to just straight picking single notes and moving up the strings. All palm muted. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It sounds at 60. <laughs> See, I got a lot of thumb movement. Stop too soon. Got a lot of thumb movement when I'm playing at this speed and palm muting. Still 
lot of thumb movement. I feel now it looks like <clears throat> so I got thumb movement going on and wrist movement at the same time at that point kind of doing this try 200 but I started feeling awkward at the end there so <clears throat> it's definitely getting in the realm of a challenging for me See if I can do 220. Okay, that's enough. So yeah, we, you can get the palmy stuff going pretty fast. Um, so I'm, I'm still thinking, like you know, what we can do further, maybe even next week, or depending on what happens. But doing some like A2 type stuff, where you actually do the higher volume style training. So, was it one of these? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I think 140 here was a decent speed for you, just right out the gate. So maybe like doing something that lasts, you know, a couple minutes, where you're just constantly picking at 140 for that. For <clears throat> goodness, I can't think. Having you place it like maybe like a two minute long thing or even a one minute long thing where you're picking constant 16th notes at a 140, that's something I'll do similar things like that when I get stuck with something where I can't really go any faster. So I kind of stay close to where my max is with something, but I'm still within control of it and I do it for a long time. It's that cheers method thing I, I talked about in that ebook. I think we talked about that. Basically, I put on a show, you know, so I got 20, 25 minutes of something I don't have to think about too much just to keep me from being bored of playing the same thing for 20 to 25 minutes. And I just, you know, do it as long as I possibly can before I need to, you know, stop for a minute, shake it out, take a break. I might even increase the metronome after a bit uh, within that same practice session. But those long high volume sessions have yielded very good results for me uh, even if it's just making me feel more comfortable at that speed I mean something of benefit has seemed to always happen with me I may not always make the biggest speed gains after that but I tell you the metronome work getting it up from the bottom up to the to higher speed it goes a lot smoother so we'll talk more about that um, again seeing how fast you get with some of these things because like a goal I have for you once you be able to like pick you know like do things like this at the 180 beats a minute that you can pick if you were just on one street <clears throat> so I want to get you know help you get be able to transfer that to other things so at least that's that's one goal in mind I got right now I we haven't done legato stuff in a bit but now we're at that point of, uh, you know, we can't go everywhere at once. So, yeah, pinpointing on one particular thing. Okay, I'm done babbling. Gosh, this thing's almost a 20-minute video. Holy moly. All right, I will see you next week.